drawing the um, first page of Lola XOXO volume 3 issue 1 page 1 um, we are at the layout phase right now so I have the script pulled up on my screen and here is um, kind of the concept uh, from issue 1 page 1 we're gonna fast forward quite a bit so that this this kind of uh, scene comes into fruition in the last volume and we're going to call back on this scene right here so um basically it's chicken scratches to most people but i know <laughs> i know exactly what this is right here i swear to you i uh I, generally speaking i kind of know what i want but if i want to go if i have time i would try to do a couple of layouts um maybe even three to kind of uh, make this more dynamic and kind of push the scene more instead of just settling for my first layout. I'm thinking I could probably do three layouts and then pick or mi mix and match uh, the layouts that I find to be the best. And I apologize for the excess noise outside because I live on a very busy street and it's Saturday so generally speaking Saturday is the busiest most uh, back noise filled day that of the week so my apologies maybe I'll just dub some music over this but that would take away from the um, amount of work that it takes for me to actually try to focus when I'm working so you guys have to suffer with me so I've established that Lola's arms are gonna be outstretched but she's an adult this time kind of like the first issue so the one the scenes that I need to kind of figure out the angles are panels one, two, and three. I feel like I'm just redrawing panels again. Uh, you know, maybe I've already had this shot established for a few weeks now, so I'm just gonna keep this shot the same. The hawk is swooping down, or Lola, I should say, not hawk. into the forest and we'll keep that shot the same and we can re we can keep the shot the same again to for continuation's sake and then kind of have the background elements of the guys in the script more specifically uh, Conrad Monarch and a couple other guys So we could possibly keep the camera in the same place. And so panels two and three would kind of go together. So I'm not sure. I mean, we could do it that way, but it is a dream sequence. So maybe kind of jumping around a little bit wouldn't be too bad. Focus on Lola landing. Maybe make the figure kind of big forest in the background and then hawk form right here so this is our hawk I'm probably gonna have to do one more layout just something different for sure this is gonna be a horizontal shot um, the hawk is gonna remain over here uh, you know, there's not too much I could, in terms of how I laid this shot out that I'd want to change. So, you know, the advantages of drawing, writing, and, and um, well, yeah, just drawing and writing your own comic is you kind of had a preset idea in mind for the most part. I mean, any scenes that you have questions about, um, you can kind of work that out and add a couple layouts. But in this case, I've kind of already had what I wanted to draw in mind. So now it's all about executing a more detailed layout I think so you know what I think I'm just gonna go with uh, the second layout which well 
No, maybe I'll just go with the first layout. Yep. Okay, so let's put a little bit more detail into this piece right, or this, um, let's put a little bit more detail into the layout. So Lola is going to have her arms outstretched like in volume one, issue, issue one, page one, volume one, issue one, page one. Yep. And um, it's going to kind of call back to when she was a little kid. She was dreaming. Now she's an adult in this scene. Lola's flying. She's swooping down. So these layouts are more or less to show me the size and the, the basic angle and um, yeah, basic l angles and layouts of the pages because otherwise I'd spend a lot of time doing this and I have to start drawing the actual page tonight. So you get stick figures for me. Um, plus when I actually get to the final pages sometimes I kind of change things around a little bit. But I don't do that with books where there's plenty of editors. But um, when it's my own book, I kind of have to trust some of my own judgment for what I really want. And uh, hopefully people are happy with it. But you know what? If people aren't happy with it, i got to own it. And that's kind of something that I did. So it's just how we roll. Let's see. What do we, what do we got here? Uh, No. There's no humans in that panel. So we have the other characters standing in the foreground right here. And then Lola's gonna land right here. Then we have a hawk right here. So let's get started on the layout, the actual paper. We're just going to wrap this in and see how it looks because chances are, because it's the first page, I'm probably going to erase quite a bit to make sure I get what I want out of it. Can you tell that that's Lola <laughs> with her arms outstretched? I hope so. Some tree branches here. So we'll just assume the hawk is going to be about this big right here. I don't want him to take up too much room. Reverse angle of the guys kind of standing around. I'm thinking they, they're roasting marshmallows or something. Because why, why else would they be laughing in the wasteland if they're not doing something at least interesting? So make-believe fire. Make believe Conrad, Monarch, and let's say Howie, and a couple other guys, maybe. I could already tell that this is going to change up quite a bit. Um, so, up angle. Since there's a lot going on on this page, I'm going to bring my pencils to a pretty decent finish before I start inking it and the um, fifth panel is probably going to be mostly watercolors uh, I feel like watercolors captures feathers and trees and backgrounds a lot better than Copics can it adds a three-dimensional feel to it or a, a depth of feel that you don't get if you're doing Copics on the foreground and background, which I've done in the past, but I've kind of learned how to control the uh, amount of water that goes into the watercolors and being more patient and letting it dry so that it doesn't doesn't uh, start to tear into the paper and it doesn't warp as much. Lucky for me, uh, the Eon boards, they are pretty, pretty hardy. Uh, this is a it's a plate no not a plate surface. This is actually um, I wouldn't say vellum, but it's, there's no there's no 
gloss on it or um, coating. So it feels like really thick printing paper, basically, which I like drawing on printing paper, as you know, and I'm sure many of you do as well. And so this is as far as I'm going to go with the pencils. Um, it's somewhat rough, but since I'm inking and coloring my own stuff, I uh, could get away with not cleaning up the lines. However, if someone else was going to come in and ink and color after me, this is actually too rough. Well, without further ado, let's get to inking. Okay, so I'm going to ink the nose and the, uh, mostly the nose with a sepia tone. And then I think for this book, I'm just going to ink with nibs and brushes, um, regular inks instead of pens, multi-liners. This is actually not light enough. That's too thick. Leave just enough room for colors. And I think her eyebrows will also be sepia tone. Um, I think the rest could be, um, could be nibs. Okay, I think we're done with the inks now and we're going to start um, do the watercolors in the background first and then after it dries I think I'll go in and do the, the character. Let's get started. So I have to be very careful with this part because if the watercolors don't dry and I'm adding more color to it or I start inking it then it's going to smudge and warp the paper so you know I usually wait about half an hour at the very least before I start um, adding another layer of watercolors to the background and so um, yeah this I just find something else to do while I'm waiting for it to dry. Good morning, and this is now day two of uh, page one. I've already started um, watercolors in the background, a little bit of Copics in the foreground. Um, I'm glad I waited for it to dry because it would be really warpy and um, the, 
the um, ink actually didn't dry all the way, so I started using Copics and it started smearing. So I have to be very careful with this page. Um, I think I'm going to use Sumi ink from this point on, and because it dries faster, it's kind of flat, a flat tone, so it's not too, um, not too bad. But let's get started and go ahead and finish this page. We'll turn this in and then gonna move really fast. 19 more pages to go. And before I forget, this is the ink I was using and usually it's, uh, it's pretty good Copics. I use a nib so I'm not quite sure. I'm gonna have to do some tests on it to see what I've done wrong because it never smudged before in the past. So, okay. This is the ink I'm gonna use today. semi black ink. Okay. Okay, so we should be good to do base colors. Um, and see how it goes, because either way we have to color this. Um, and just be very, very careful. I haven't really inked in, with nibs in so long that I realized um, it does put a strain on your wrist, so I have to be very careful. Because I'm used to inking with brushes and uh, pens, it doesn't really cause that much. It's I don't have to press very hard, so it doesn't really put any pressure on my wrist. So, yeah, it was pretty sore yesterday. So I have to be very cognizant of that. And it's a good thing that the paper I'm using isn't very rough, and the Sumi ink is it's a pretty... Um, it's a pretty watered down ink, so it's not that thick. It's not the thick matte black that I like using overall, so we'll see how that goes. I'll let you know tomorrow if I have problems or I feel any soreness because I've never really had to worry about carpal tunnel. It's been a long time. Anyhow. I'd like to think that I'm used to doing something after I've done it so many times, but I also like to change things up, so no one technique that I use on one book or even one page or piece of art or cover is going to be the same as what I end up doing later if I think that I've found something that might work better or that would look more interesting. I just kind of go for it. Overall, I think I enjoy the whole entire process of making this comic because I get to write it um, pencil, ink, and color it. So there's no one process that I'm doing the whole entire time. I didn't initially put them in the script for this page, but I figured since we have a gathering of people that Lola loves, Cloud has definitely got to be one of them. Yeah, and here is the fun part. I have not colored Lola, interior Lola, for a very long time. I've been waiting a good year and a half, almost two years now, um, to work on her again.
So I'm coloring her, coloring her skin right now with a um, like a beige color. I I generally use um, it's like an E21 in Copic markers, and uh, it's kind of like my uh, mid tone color. Once I've used the uh, milky white, which is the base tone, to try to um, give the overall uh, shadow and mid tones for her skin, and then I add like a pinkish rose to her cheeks and her lips and. Um, I don't use blenders, so I, I go back and forth between like the you know um, base color and the mid tones just to smooth everything out, especially when it comes to skin. I don't like uh, a harsh looking blend on the skin. I mean, for men it it looks okay, but for um, women's faces, I uh, you know blending it as much as possible is is really important just to soften everything out and um, being very very cautious. I try not to you know, do too much without thinking ahead of time when it comes to the face. And of course, you know, I've messed up in the past, but I've been a lot more careful about approaching the face nowadays. to my favorite part um, as you all know it's the jelly jelly pens but this is like a poshka so um, you know it just brings out some of the harshness and the mid-tones that I've ended up um, maybe doing too much of and so it kind of livens everything and brings a contrast into the piece along with the um, inking that I do with the blacks so that the page kind of pops out more and it's not so flat because um, watercolors and Copics, once you do it together, sometimes it just flattens out the piece. Um, but you know, luckily, these pens work really well over the inks and the markers and the watercolors. So we're wrapping everything up, um, bringing out more contrast and uh, touching up anything that needs touching up and then um, we're good to go. Yeah.